Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining me for uh, tonight's uh, Facebook live stream, the first one of uh, 2023 from Drayton. Um, and tonight, as per the promo, um, it's going to be a bit of a mashup. So there's no real set format. Um, you can feel free to answer, ask any questions whenever you want. Uh, just chip in as we go through. Uh, and I'm just going to really want to try and tackle some of the questions that we've had over the last few months come in through our technical support desk, but also on our um, Facebook group and YouTube comments. So we've had quite a lot of um, feedback uh, on the, the videos that go out. So like, for instance, this this live stream will, will find its way onto YouTube, but also the other uh, YouTube content we put out, so there's been, a lot of people are commenting. So it's a good opportunity for me to do this, and I'll probably do this periodically every every few months just to clear up what's coming in. And like I say, if there's anything that you want me to uh, cover off um, while we're on this session, or indeed for ideas for future videos, stick them in the comments and uh, I'll do my best to oblige. So to kick off first, uh, I, on, I, I did ask if anybody had any questions on the promo yesterday. And Jeremy Hine came, came in with one um, on the uh, auto balancing and using Wiser. So let me show you this. This is our our new auto balancing valve. You've probably seen seen this. Some of you may have even got, got around to using it by now. Um, but just in brief, what this essentially does is it takes away the need for you to be manually balancing your heating system by throttling down your lock shields. What you do with these is you set the uh, flow rate on the top. So anything from uh, 10 litres up to 150 litres per hour, and you set that by turning that hex to the appropriate uh, inter uh, interval. The way you find out what you need to set it to is by using either the online calculator, which takes into consideration the size and type of radiators that you've got, or if you know the output of your radiator, then you can. Uh, th there's a chart on the box that shows you what position and what setting you need to set that to. Now, the question from Jeremy was, uh, should I be using these uh, with Wiser? And the question to that is, absolutely, you should. So the, the, the basic premise with Wiser is that the expectation is that it's going to be fitted to a fully balanced system. So in essence, it doesn't matter how your system is balanced, it, but it needs to be, and it, it needs to be really regardless of whatever goes on the top of this, whether it's a, a manual cap, whether it's a TRV, you know, a mechanical TRV, or whether it's Wiser, your system needs to be balanced because we need to make sure that we can get enough hot water circulating around the system to fulfill all the radiators and also not provide this sort of short circuit where you're going to be having your return temperature getting up over dew point and knocking the boiler out of condensing mode. So you have to do, absolutely do want to fit them to a balanced system. This obviously makes balancing really easy because you're no longer having to do differential temperatures between the flow and return on the, on the radiator tails. You can set this based on the delta T that you want, uh, the flow temperature that's coming from the boiler, and what the radiator output is, and that will tell you what you need to set that top to. Just pop it in. You need to lock the lock shield in the wide open position so that you're not giving any extra throttling that end, and then you're ready to put whatever head you want on the top of here. Now, to bring it back to Wiser, as you know, in the Wiser kit, you get two adapters. You get the big chunky black one, which is for the Danfoss RA. And you also get uh, this two-parter, which is the uh, the one for the M M30 by one and a half, which is what the thread standard is on this and all of the rest of our other bodies. Now, you'll notice on the inside of there that it's smooth. Now, we did make an engineering change to these uh, recently where we took away the hex that was inside of there in order to make it more compatible across a wider range of third party and competitors valve bodies. But the upshot of that is that when you're using it on the auto balancing uh, body, you do need to make sure that when you tighten it down, it's no good just having it finger tight. You do need to use a set of these just to nip it up. It's not so critical on the EB body because the EB body uses the serrations around the rim that interlock with the bottom of the adapter. But the hex, because we remove that to make it more compatible, it can no longer bear on the center of that. So when you when you fit that, if, you, if you're going to use wiser, in order to stop the head just sort of spinning around infinitely, when you put the adapter on, pair of water pump pliers, just give it a nip. That will tighten it down. And then if you need to make an adjustment, just loosen it off get this to where the indicators are pointing forward, and then, again, tighten it up using your water pump pliers. So thanks for that question, Jeremy. 
Um, and if you need any more information, then uh, just again comment or you know reach out to us in some way. Whilst we're on the subject of Wiser, um, another question that uh, is a favourite actually is how we reset the Wiser devices. So let's let's assume that you you've had some issues when you're installing, or more commonly, what happens is as the installer you get called in because maybe the customers had a go at setting it up and made a bit of a hash of it. So you want to rather than try and pick through and understand what they've done, clear everything down and uh, start from scratch. Now. Starting with the hub, this is the easy one. So the, the way we factory reset the hub is irrespective of what, what color light you've got on the setup button there. You press and hold the setup button and you keep it held down. Now it's roughly 20 seconds, but the important thing that you're looking for is for all the lights to go off. So both your heating and hot water, if they were on, will go off. But importantly, the setup light will also go off. Once it's gone off, let go of the button, let the hub reboot. So when it reboots, the, the, the setup light will be going through a sort of a uh, amber and green flashing. It will then stabilize on green and you're then ready. And that's that's essentially factory fresh as if it's never been out of the box. You can then go through and set it up. So that will have kicked all the devices off the off the network. It will also have forgotten any Wi-Fi details. Um, so that's really then ready to go uh, for another setup. If you do that, it, and you had devices connected, you're highly likely to end up with something like this. So here's the Wiser room stat, and you can see in the top left-hand corner, right-hand corner, top right-hand corner, you've got the uh, the little um, red triangle telling you that it's not connected. And also, when it's not connected, you don't get any uh, set point popping up in the bottom corner because, obviously, it's not actually controlling anything. So this needs to be reset. The way we do that is... Pop a battery out of the back so that it goes dead. Battery back in. Wait for the green splash screen. And as soon as you see it, you need to press and hold and keep held in the plus and the minus button. And you see that it persists on that wiser screen. Now, if I was to let go of my fingers, we'd be back at the screen I showed you just now, which was showing a temperature. But because I'm keeping my fingers on the plus and minus, we are now going to go through a factory reset process. You should see that at some point, if it's not done it already, that the little LED at the bottom flashed red. And then it finally changes onto this screen, which is the join screen. What I would do then is battery back out, let it go dead. Do the, do the app work, so go onto the app. Tell it, tell, the app tells the hub to expect to see a room thermostat. Once you see that, pop the batteries back in. Once again, you'll get the green splash screen, but now it will take you straight in to the little uh, signal, signal indicator. That's now ready to join. If you've got an old, a really old version of the room stat, then this is actually replaced by some text which says join a network. And you need to press the center button to get it into join mode. But the but the factory resetting part is the same. So if you've got a temperature, if, if you open the box, put the batteries in, you've got a temperature on screen, you need to factory reset it. That's how you do it. Lastly is the uh, Wiser smart radiator thermostat. Now these um, these will tell you if they're if if they're not connected, and that's what if you if you twist the cap instead of getting the sort of solid LED to tell you that you've done a boost, uh, you get this arrangement where it's flashing, rapidly flashing, either blue or red, depending on which direction you go in. Now, under this condition, they still do open, so you can use this in conjunction with the uh, override button on here. So say, say if, for instance, everything's gone wrong and you can't, you, you, but you've got to drive heat into the property, you can either take these off or when you plus them, they will actually open. You can feel the motor open, and then you could press and hold the heating button on the hub to, to manually drive the heating on. But what we do in this case is to reset it, you hold it over to the minus, and you keep it held over. Now, if I get in on tight on the, uh, on the indicator, you should see then that uh, you will get this pulsing red in the middle. Now, you keep this held over. Again, it's about 20 seconds, but you keep it held over to the minus, until the red pulsing stops and then you let go the valve or the actuator i should say the, the smart head will then reset and it will then drive open so you'll get the red and it's pulling the plunger up out of the bottom and then you're into the familiar calibration mode where you're able to then go off and add it to a network when you hold it over to the plus now it will then 
go green and that's obviously that's that's looking to join the uh, the devices network now obviously once you've joined it you then go through the calibration mode once you've made sure that your adapter is tight to your valve body and everything's nice and rigid once it's added make sure you go through calibration right so that's that last question on wiser devices are do i need to um do I need to recalibrate the smart heads when I change the batteries? Well, you do. So you do, but it, it sort of guides you through it on its own. So if I take the batteries out of out of one, as soon as you put the batteries in, it will drive it into calibration mode. So there's no real way around. You, you, you essentially can't not recalibrate it if it's if you've changed the batteries, because as soon as you power down and put new batteries in, it drives it into calibration mode. You can then hold it over to the, to the minus to calibrate or leave it for five minutes and it will calibrate itself. But the reason we do that is because it's highly likely in order for you to have got to the batteries, you will have grabbed over the head and turned it so that you can get to the battery compartment. And in doing so, you'll have destroyed the previous calibration. So that's why it does that. So I think that's pretty much everything on Wiser that I've got to talk to you about. Next question is one that actually came in on the back of a, a YouTube video, which is regarding our EB body. So this is the body that is supplied with the RT414 and the TRV4 when it's not supplied with the, when you, you know, when you don't buy the auto balancing version. Now remember with these, they've got the replaceable gland seal, but also you can turn the insert. Now you've got six positions on, I, I suspect you won't be able to see the numbers, but you've got six positions which align with the with the with the output, and that will give you varying degrees of throttling so that you can actually balance on the uh, on this TR on this TRV body. Now the way you do that is you need to have this, which is the the presetting key, and you engage it onto the clamp ring which sits in the top. And let me just get a close up on that so you can see that white clamp ring that's around the top. You engage it into there. Now you give it half a turn so the where, where the question came up is what should i be turning this 90 degrees or should i be turning it 180 degrees now the answer to that is it doesn't really matter the important thing is you don't take the thing right out because if you if you do, uh, take it right out completely there is nothing other than the friction of the seal on the insert that's holding that into the body so you know with with one and a half bar pressure behind it this becomes a projectile so there's no it doesn't it's not super critical how far you turn it because it's, it, it's still engaged whether you turn it 90 degrees the clamp ring's not going to fall out and if you turn it 180 degrees it's still not going to fall out it's only going to it's only going to come out if you unscrew it all the way now just to just to be a little clearer on that if i remove the clamp ring in its entirety the valve insert will come out. Now I've I've disassembled this to make it a little bit easier, but around here is uh, there is an O-ring that sits in there, and that's what presses up against the side of the case of of the of the brass casing, and that's what gives you your seal. So you can see that when the clamp ring on the top is removed, there's nothing to stop this coming out. So no more than half a turn um, when you're when you're loosening the clamp ring. Then when you come to turn the uh, the insert within the body, you always want to turn it in a clockwise direction. And that's so that if it does pick up the clamp ring, so if, 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 there's a, if, it, if it's a sort of fairly tight fit on the top of the insert, if it does pick up the clamp ring, you're only ever going to tighten the clamp ring. If you go anti-clockwise, you risk loosening the clamp ring even further. Whilst I've got this apart, I'll just show you exactly how this balancing of the six positions work so what you're looking at there is uh, position number six that with that wide open aperture and then as we rotate it around in the clockwise direction that's now position one and you can see that's the smallest aperture then you've got position two position three position four and they're all incrementally getting slightly bigger until you come back to position six now with that in mind you can't set it on a half position because you will just be up against the plastic. You won't actually be. You won't actually align the aperture with the uh, the output or the, the the port on the casting. So you you have to be on whole numbers. But that's what they look like. You start off at six. As you turn it clockwise, you go to the smallest, which is number one. 
And then as you progress on through, they get incrementally bigger and bigger and bigger. And then once you've done it, remember to tighten your clamp ring back up with the other end of the tool. And that and whatever you've set on that, that's now balanced, uh, ready for the TRV head. Again, doesn't matter which one, whether it's a 414 or TRV4. The RT212 will also fit it, other than it's supplied with the normally with a fixed flow rate body, but an RT212 will fit and work just as well, as will a wiser head. Right. I think that is it on uh, TRVs. The next thing I want to cover off are some questions regarding the new Digistat. And the favorite one at the moment is, is with regards to pairing. So if you've, uh, if you've fitted this, you may well have seen at some stage um, this configuration. Now, this is admittedly the two channel, but it's just as applicable with the single channel. It's just that you'll have the one LED and the one button. But this is what happens if, when you uh, when you when you're installing this, you get the order of operations wrong. So the important thing to remember with these is when you get them out of the box, make sure you pair up or make sure you power up the receiver before you put the batteries into the thermostat. I know a lot of people make the mistake of putting the batteries in the thermostat first. The thermostat then times out while it's scanning to see what's going on. And you end up in this scenario where the receiver can't see uh, the Digistat. And uh, the, all, the only control that you've got is the manual override by pressing by pressing the buttons on the front. Now, the way that we uh, can get this back, if you're in this situation, is we need to factory reset the receiver. And then we factory reset the, uh, the um, wireless part of the, um, of the Digistat. And by doing that, You'll then they, they'll then see each other and pair up. So on the heating button, now if you've got the single channel receiver, you've only got the one button. So that's the one you press and hold in. But you press and hold in the button and you keep it held in. And what you're looking for is for the receiver to reset. And you'll know it's reset because you'll get a burst of red flashing. Again, around about 20 seconds. You'll get a burst of red flashing. There it is. And then when it comes back, it will be in this condition where it's flashing between amber and green. Now, that is join mode. Once you're at that stage, you then go to the thermostat, and you need to press and hold in the calendar button. Keep it held in, and it comes up with scan. And then give it a couple of seconds, and it will pick up the, uh, the receiver. Now, with this being the two channel, you now get some options. If this was the single channel, it would just revert back, show you a temperature, and then you would be on your way. But because this is the two channel, you get to choose how you want it to control. So you can choose central heating only, or you can choose central heating and domestic hot water. That's if you wanted to control hot water and central heating with, uh, with this thermostat. So that would mean the receiver would be replacing a two channel programmer. But here, I'm going to choose just central heating because I want to show you how you then add the other thermostat to the system. So make sure it says the option that you want, in this case, CH. Confirm it with the, uh, the circle button. Tells you that the pairing has been received. And now, when we look at the receiver, you can see that the radiator side is not calling for heat, so there's no green light. If, if we call for heat, that light will go green. But the important thing is that the override button no longer works because you can't override a working system. On the other side, because we haven't done anything with it, we haven't told it it's hot water and we haven't told it that it's uh, another another room stat yet. That's still um, that that's still working on the override. So to get the next thermostat on the go, you press and hold the heating button again, same one as before. Keep it held in. There you see we are now back into join mode. Now you get your second stat. Pop your batteries in. Now if this is a new thermostat and has not been used before, as soon as you put the batteries in, it will come up with scan, which it's doing. Give it a couple of seconds like we did before. This time, it won't actually offer you any options. It just tells you that the pair is received because it knows that it can only pair it to the one channel. And now when we look at the receiver, you can see that both of the uh, both of the channels are now in the off position. Neither of the overrides work because they've got thermostats paired to them. The only way we can get those to change state now 
is to call for heat on the thermostat and that will then fire the respective relay so this will be the first channel and if i raise the temperature on the other one we will then get a call for heat on the other channel so really useful solution if you want to zone a combi boiler and not have to have multiple receivers uh, all wired in so that's that's the factory resetting and the uh, the pairing of, of a second thermostat. Another question we get quite commonly asked with these uh, is around the um, the lock screen. So you'll see on some of these, if you've gone through the Bluetooth journey, let me just let me just light, bright, brighten up the screen. You can see there up in the top corner, you've got the lock screen, and as a consequence of having that locks that padlock symbol there none of the buttons actually respond. Now, there's a couple of ways you can get that padlock. One is that you set access protection. So you actually go into the, to the system menu and you set up an access code. But if you do that, as soon as you press a button, it will prompt you for that code. The reason that we've got that padlock up in this top corner is because we've, it's paired by Bluetooth with the app. And when you do that, when you've got the app open, that the app takes precedent over the actual control. So it locks out the, the, the controls on the actual device itself and the control comes from within the app. Now, if I, if I get that in shot, if I close the app, which I've done, you can see now the lock screen has disappeared and consequently the buttons on the device start working again. As soon as I open the app and the Bluetooth connects, we will then get the padlock come up in the top corner. The, the app, the control now is via the app, and the uh, the buttons on the Digistat itself have been locked out. So that's that's one that can sort of catch you out. Now, now you may find, and I have on a couple of occasions, that closing the app or just backgrounding the app, I should say. So you don't need to force close it, but all you really need to do is just you know just swipe up sometimes that isn't enough sometimes it doesn't drop the bluetooth connection so the next option is to force close it or actually go into your bluetooth settings and turn off bluetooth to uh, to release that uh, that connection but invariably you don't normally have to do that just backgrounding the app should be enough uh, to do that right last thing that i'm going to cover off on this is uh, the new Wiser app. Um, and I've got a slide deck here to help me support on that because what I want to talk you through, you may have noticed, and I'm sure you have if you've tried to set up Wiser or indeed the new Digistat, that we've made some changes to the look and feel of the Wiser app. Um, but also more importantly, the process flow has, has slightly changed and it's slightly more logical and slightly more geared towards having two journeys between uh, the end user and the homeowner. So let me bring you in to the slide deck. And when you download the uh, the Wiser app from App Store or Google Play, this is the screen that uh, you, you will get to. When you hit the Get Started button now, you've immediately got this the opportunity to go off in two different directions. So professional home, uh, installer and homeowner. Now, if you're a prof if you're a professional installer. And you're going to do the whole thing. So let's say, for instance, you're going to go through and do every single part of the installation, including connecting it to Wi-Fi and including setting up the uh, the accounts and the registration. Then you are going to pick the homeowner, uh, the homeowner option. The whole point of having the professional installer option is to make the whole GDPR, GDPR management much easier, whereby as a professional installer, you can go in, you're not having to use the customer's phone, you're not having to uh, ask them for passwords and email addresses. You can go in, you can form a direct connection between your phone and the soft access point of the Wiser Hub and do all the setup and then hand it over to the homeowner. So if, if, you've, if you've done that and you hand it over to the homeowner, they then follow the homeowner journey. If you're doing the full installation, say for it's for your own home, then you'll go in and uh, do the homeowner journey as well. So Professor Insurer just drives you away from having to get involved with registration. So for this first one, we'll pick the uh, the professional installer route. And then it asks you for the country that you're setting it up. Depending on what you choose there, it, depend, it influences what you see on this screen here because uh, certain countries have certain variants of hub. And obviously in the UK, 
our options are the Hubar for Wiser and the Digistat for uh, you know for, for the new Digistat. So you pick the Hubar, and then this is all well trodden ground. This is what we all know about clicking the the setup button, progressing through in the app and to your Wi-Fi settings, picking up the access point called Wiser, waiting for it to stabilize, coming back into the app, and then you see that the the, the uh, continue button is now livened up, and uh, it allows you to progress onward. And you get the confirmation. Now, as the installer, this is a key screen for you to get involved with. This is where you set up the type of heating uh, in terms of like the gas, oil, or electric, or heat pump. And that's really defining the cycle rate of standard relay control. Now, if you, uh, you, you'll see in there, you've also got open therm as an option. Um, now, we're doing a lot of work at the moment to improve our implementation of open therm so for the moment i would advise you on regardless of what version of wiser you are using to uh, use relay control so you're going to keep the control type as standard and you're going to choose your heat source accordingly just as a refresher oil gas and electric and heat pump those are the options that are in there or uh, electric is the fastest cycling so that's uh, 12 cycles per hour so your boiler could fire in theory for at least one minute in every five um gas is the next one which is six cycles per hour so boiler fires potentially once every 10 minutes in order to fulfill demand uh, oil is the slowest uh, three cycles per hour once every 20 minutes and the heat pump setting is just on off so it's on until you hit set point and then it's off until it drops half a degree below what that set point is so which is much more geared up for indicating demand for a heat pump you then get the option, and it, it is very much an option, to set up the home Wi-Fi. Now, I normally steer installers away from getting involved with that because it's more within the customer's domain. However, there may be occasions where you need to do that. So say, for instance, if you buy a, a hub out of the wholesaler and it's sat on the shelf for six months, say, it's highly likely that the firmware on it is going to be out of date. And it may be, depending on what devices you want to add, particularly if it's the, the ones that we've released more laterally, so say, for instance, Wiser Underfloor Heating or the Electrical Heat Switch, it may be that you can't actually see them as an option until you connect to the Wi-Fi and get the latest firmware. So that's why this option is there, but you, you, you're not obliged to do it, and it's, it's really an easier one just to skip and let the, the customer do it as part of the, uh, the, the, the customer journey. So once you've gone through all that, then you'll be familiar with this uh, landing page, albeit it's, it now looks a, little, a bit different with the white theme, but you can then go through, pick what devices you're going to add, wait for them to add, assign them to a room. Remember that the room that you assign here, that's one of your 16 virtual zones to which you can add devices to, and then you're done. And then once, you, once you've done all of your devices, you can go in, you get the same control screen that the customer has, except the method that you're connected to here is your phone is talking directly to the hub, not, uh, not, not via Wi-Fi or local connection. But you get all the control that the customer would if they were to do that. Now, I'm just going to cover off briefly the customer journey so that you can sort of understand and, and manage the customer's expectations. And, you know, when you're setting this up, it, it's always nice to let the customer know that in order to, to complete setup, they need to do they do need to do some amount of it. You can only take it to a certain point. So the customer journey, they download the app onto their phone. They hit the get started. They're now going to pick the homeowner. And this is all surrounding account creation. And as you can see, this is why you don't, as the installer, want to be getting involved with that uh, for, for the customer. So, it, you know, it's their email address. It's the password that they want to set up. They need to accept the, the, the terms of use. It's no good you doing that because, you know, it's them that's going to be using it. They then get sent the confirmation email. So this bit's all the same. Uh, it's just that the sort of order has been rejigged. But into their emails, they've got the button there that confirms it. Once it's confirmed, back into the Wiser app, and you get the tick at the bottom there to tell you that it's now ready to progress on. There's no more terms and conditions that they need to, to agree to uh, with regards to sort of um, data. Uh, you know, it, it, it's really all surrounding GDPR and methods of communication in terms of, you know, whether they want to subscribe to our Marcoms and things like that. Once you've done that, the last bit is about uh, setting up your home. So you you can stick in here your uh, your address 
and your postcode. And then once that's done, it then asks you to set up the device. So you're going to still do this because you've now got to configure the hub onto the home Wi-Fi. So pick the hub. And this is exactly the same journey that the installer went through or you as the installer went through when you were setting it up, which is getting the phone talking to the, uh, to the hub. Once you're there, they're going to ignore this screen and they're just going to take as read whatever you've uh, configured there. Will they'll, they'll, they, They've got no need to change. But they are, as you can see here, there's no skip button when it comes to Wi-Fi because this is absolutely something that they need to get involved with. So in, pick their home Wi-Fi, enter the password, wait for it to authenticate. You get the confirmation and they're then at this uh, landing page like we were at before. Um, but obviously for them, there's nothing to do because you've just done it. So you now hit the done button. And as you were going through that process, once you'd entered the Wi-Fi credentials, the uh, the hub was then handed over onto the home Wi-Fi network. Uh, and you're now at the stage where pairing has been completed and the customer has got the same control that you had when you were going in testing it albeit their routine is different. So they're now talking locally via their router when they're within the home, but they can also go uh, and have remote access. So as long as they've got a 3G, 4G, or indeed 5G uh, connection, they'll be able to uh, access the Wiser app and uh, control their heating from outside of the home. And if they want to do any further integrations, they're now free to do that using their Wiser email address and password. By so so that's like things like the uh, Google Assistant um, and Alexa, IFTTT, or if you've even got a Panasonic heat pump, you can link it so that you get the uh, the, the heat pump data uh, piped through into the Wiser app. Right, so that's sort of it in terms of the questions that I had uh, prepared or that have come in over the last uh, few few months or so. Just going to have a quick look to check to see if anything has come in while I've been live. Uh, so this is sort of like your last sort of 30 seconds warning before we, we wrap up this session. Just a quick check to see if anything uh, if anything is has come in. No, nothing while I've been live. So uh, that just leaves me to say thanks for joining me tonight, guys. This will find its way up onto YouTube tomorrow. So if you have missed the session, you'll be able to pick it up in the group, but also it will go up to YouTube. Uh, if you've got any ideas or anything that you want to see about future content, um, by all means, get it over to us. Just comment on the video or post it in the Facebook group, however you, uh, you prefer, and uh, we'll pick it up. Also, keep an eye out uh, over the next this next year. So we've got some some good plans this year for some stuff. Um, obviously, the, we've, there's a big open firm revamp happening this year. So there'll be some stuff like the stuff coming up around that, probably around sort of summer heading into heating season. Um, there's also going to be some more traditional models modules going up on to the uh, the know how. So onto the the, the Drayton Academy in know how. So there's going to be. Uh, some installation based on different control packs, just so that you've got, you, you know, you're, you're all over that. We'll also do some fault finding and a bit of a, dig a, a deeper dive on uh, motorized valves. So uh, that's going to be coming up over this year. So keep uh, keep an eye on the uh, the know how modules in know how. Uh, Priority shop is closed at the moment, but as soon as that reopens, you'll be able to get in there and get uh, your kit uh, for some good prices. Um, but that's sort of it. Thanks for that, guys. Thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for the support. And uh, I'll see you on the next one in probably about a month's time. Cheers, guys. Catch you later.